before there was knowledge on tectonics, the Taiwanese people believed that earthquakes were caused by an ox deep inside the earth. When the earth moves, the ox is turning over. Kalangpu Fault runs north to south in eastern Taiwan, beginning at Kolan in Miao country and terminating south in Chashan in Nantu country. During the 1999 Chichi earthquake, surface crust was ruptured and deformed at a length of 100 kilometres. Vertical displacement was greater in the north than the south, reaching 10 metres in some areas. Surface ruptures in Troshan Tu Township, Nantu Country, cut across Anxi Bridge, Tongtu Bridge, and roads, closing off major transport and communication routes. Riverbanks, tea plantations, and rice fields were also deformed. Tea plantations bent westward, rising three metres in height. The northern banks of Zhui River also bent a short distance with a two metre height difference. Surface ruptures in Wufeng, Taichung country, cause more serious harm than in Troshantu, as population and building density was a lot higher. The fault line destroyed many scenic spots and cultural properties such as Wangfu Temple. The fault ran along the eastern foothill slope and thrusted land 1.5 to 2.5 metres horizontally. Ruptures also caused a 3 metre uplift along the Han River, displacing the south bank and weakening soils leading to the 15-degree tilt of nearby buildings along with liquefaction. Rupture damage of Kalangpu Fault was prominent at Gawangfu Junior High School. The fault cut across the area, rising and shifting the running track and causing structural failure to 60% of the school buildings. The government later developed this area into the 921 Earthquake Museum of Taiwan a place of education and understanding of tectonic hazards surrounding Taiwan. On September 21st, 1999, a magnitude 7.3 earthquake hit Taiwan. It was the worst earthquake to hit Taiwan, where quakes are common due to its location in the seismically active zone of the Pacific Basin, between the Philippine Sea Plate and Eurasian Plate, since the 1935 quake that killed over 3,200 people. The earthquake shook Taiwan at 1.47 a.m. Because it occurred at night, this factor may have increased the severity of the impacts because people would be asleep in their homes. Taiwan is also very densely populated. In 1999, Taiwan was listed 14th on the world's population density index, with 685.47 people per square kilometre. This again increases the vulnerability of the people of Taiwan. The focal depth of the earthquake was only 8 kilometres, which is very shallow, and why the damage was so severe. The epicentre occurred in an unusual location. Taiwan has the majority of its earthquakes off the eastern coast, subsequently causing little damage. 2,415 people were killed and 49 um, were missing. Approximately 52,000 buildings were destroyed. This large number of collapsed buildings was due to shoddy construction that occurred in Taiwan's building boom in the 1990s. Tents were put up in fields following the quake because people were too afraid of being in buildings while the aftershocks continued. There was also $10 billion worth of damage due to the largely damaged infrastructure around the country. A large proportion of the island suffered from power failures as a result of the damage to power stations, transmission stations and the automatic shutdown of Taiwan's three nuclear power stations. In most cases of disaster, the impacts are sometimes dependent on the antecedent or pre-existing issues before the event. An example of this being the antecedent issue of poor building regulations and materials in Haiti, which led to a high death toll as buildings just collapse under the immense shaking. These type of pre-existing problems are what causes vulnerability in most cases, as they could be social, economic, environmental or political issues, which mean that the country or area can't fully recover without any external assistance. ...and materials in Haiti, which led to a high death toll as buildings just collapsed under the immense shaking. These type of pre-existing problems are what causes vulnerability in most cases, as they could be social, economic, environmental or political issues, which means that the country or area can't fully recover without any external assistance. 
Just by looking at Taiwan, it would appear quite a serious event, with a high death toll and damage, but in reality, was it that vulnerable to begin with? Yes. Some factors do highlight its vulnerability, such as the very shoddy building material and construction which arose from skipped corners during their industrial boom in the early 90s, something very clear in the Tongxi area where virtually every building collapsed. Also, due to the political tension between China and Taiwan since 1949, it isn't a surprise that they refused aid from them, and only accepted £100,000 in the end, meaning that recovery was slower as they didn't have enough. Other than this, the country as a whole, it didn't appear that vulnerable. Prior to the 1999 earthquake, Taiwan already had building regulations concerning earthquake activity, but as alluded to, the builders and contractors skipped over them to ensure that they were built quickly and cheaply. Also, the power grids which they used were designed from the USA and had withstood previous shaking. However, this time, unfortunately, the two main transition towers to the north were disrupted. Even then, the electricity didn't completely stop and people still received 5,000 of the 22,000 megawatts. Forty minutes after the earthquake, military crisis management went into action. At 4am, forces began to arrive. At 6am, a National Army Relief Command Centre was set up and rescue operations were made a top priority. Disaster relief and reconstruction came soon after. Forty rescue teams were sent in, along with 767 experts that joined Taiwan search and rescue workers. Money was distributed in order to maintain people's standard living and families were given leave of absence in order to recover and rebuild their homes. Salvage efforts immediately, were immediately seen after the earthquake, most likely because of telecommunications and transportation systems damage. Medical response was not well coordinated and there were no early warning systems. Nine months after the earthquake, two disaster medical assistance teams were set up to respond to future events. Several locally based disaster medical teams were, were set up to provide urgent medical care for victims in small to moderate scale disasters. Urban search and rescue teams were composed of rescue workers, medical personnel, structural engineers and technicians for confined, confined space rescue. All healthcare facilities are now ob obliged to put in plans to be ready for internal and external disasters. Responsibility for recovery was given to a new agency called the 912 Earthquake Post Disaster Recovery Commission. Cash payments went into households that experienced deaths, injuries, or missing people. Rent relief was also given for struggling victims. Taiwan earthquake has many consequences. These are as followed The earthquake triggered landsliding and fluvial response in the Tachu River, central Taiwan. It caused substantial bed surface elevation change of 2.6 metres to 6.7 metres. The Chi Chi earthquakes not only triggered serious coast seismic landslides itself, but also extensively disturbed surface strata around the epicentral area. After the earthquake, the rainfall induced landslides occurred mainly in places with slopes between 40 and 50 degrees. Statistics showed that people were 1.46 times more likely than non victims to commit suicide following the earthquake. The prolonged effect of the earthquake on mortality in the post-earthquake year was a decrease in mortality for all residents except male adults. The following results were found. The mortality rate increased with proximity to the epicentre. Mortality was higher among the elderly than among young people. 30% of victims died from head injuries caused by the collapse of dwellings. Peak of medical demand was 12 hours after the earthquake and significantly increased demand for care lasted as long as three days. Landslide debris created natural dams and lakes forming a 175 metre barrier. The heavy rainfall created two lakes behind the barrier. Skillful drainage work averted the anticipated breakage of the dam. The steepest hillsides and most sensitive mountainous ecosystem has been converted into cultivated land by the introduction of new agricultural products and intensified crop growing. The large monoculture fields and flat root trees provided little resistance to a massive landslide triggered by tremors, turning 30 million tonnes of rock and soil into an avalanche. However, looking in more detail and in relation to long-term impacts, outcomes appear to be more positive. During the earthquake, there was a power outage which halted power supply to over 6.8 billion users. The earthquake caused severe damage to the switching station and the total cost was $63.89 billion. 
In order to mitigate the economic impacts in case of future power outages, specific requirements have been put in place. These consist of increasing the capacity of low frequency load shedding systems, improving the remote tripping function to the, to the system north of Taiwan, construction of more generation plants to north and central Taiwan, and constructing local power generation plants or local supply systems in or near to high-tech industrial parks. Soil liquefaction was a ma major issue during and after the earthquake, where saturated soil due to applied stress by the earthquake lost its strength and, and stiffness, causing the ground to behave as a liquid. Years after the event, scientists carry out in an investigation with a series of mathematical equations and in terms of cyclic resistance, the table was put together to produce the likelihood of liquef liquefaction. This data could then be used for, sp for specific reasons that are prone to earthquakes, as well as Taiwan itself, and thus carry out an appropriate mitigation techniques. There are also many short-term positive outcomes. These were mostly directed at the local population and acted as a coping mechanism. Economic loss was a major factor after the, after the earthquake, with so many businesses lost, many people were left unemployed, with little money to afford basic necessities. The government therefore provided temporary jobs for those affected. This mostly consisted of clean-up and restoration work, with a daily wage equivalent to £10.92. To acknowledge and preserve the contribution of many people and the rescue teams, an umbrella organisation was set up in order to facilitate effective resources. On October 1st, 1999, National League of Civil Organisations was, was established to deal with, uh, with the coordination of past disaster reconstruction. During this development, 26 NGOs attended, making the organisation a well-known contribu contributor to aid development. One example is after the earthquake, the Atomic Energy Council installed automatic trip seismic system to Taiwan's three nuclear power plants. This was finished eight years later in 2007. The central government established the 921 Earthquake Recovery Foundation, which raised over 430 million US dollars for having reconstruction, repairs, and water lines, meals for elderly, healthcare subsidiaries, and a trust fund for 134 million. One specific example of a positive outcome from the 921 earthquake is the village Mezi of 1,200 1, people. Unfortunately, 48 people died during the earthquake and 2,600 2, homes were destroyed. The village chief decided to rebuild and renew the damaged village and built a park with a basketball court to promote social environment for citizens. The park, which is the pride of the village, also includes a replica railway that existed before the earthquake, built by the Japanese. This renewed railway station, as well as the beautiful surrounding countryside, has encouraged tourism to flourish, as they can use the 11 kilometer bike ride along the railway. It has become so popular that the tourism business, such as snack shops and hotels, have been built along the railway route. The earthquake to the Taiwan, um, there's some good things, I think. Maybe they make us people uh, together and uh, make us to face the risk. Make us to think more about family and maybe Another another size, maybe let the city to have some new buildings. <laughs> I think, yeah.